Hello and welcome to Shell Point Today for Thursday, May the 26th. I'm Rich Nation. And I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. Coming up on today's show, Dan Philgreen will take us on a tour of some interesting but seldom seen locations right here on our Shell Point property. And Professor Adrian Kerr will give us another preview of his English History and Culture series. But first, don't forget that you can do a little antiquing and enjoy lunch in Arcadia tomorrow. Court pickups begin at 7.30 a.m. on the island for this outing to Arcadia's historic downtown district, where you'll enjoy visiting its 20 antique stores and a vintage-style tea house. The cost of the outing is $11 with lunch on your own. Make sure you're already signed up. This weekend on Saturday, you'll want to take part in the LifeQuest discussion group. Fitness coordinator Hannah Hosterman will discuss the many roles a personal trainer plays and how this can be beneficial when starting a new exercise program. Learn about the many benefits of exercise, such as weight loss, muscle toning, posture, energy, stress reduction, and more. Join Hannah in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands at 10 a.m. on Saturday. And finally, something else you don't want to miss out on is the big sale. I'm talking really big here. The memorial sale at the community thrift store. On Saturday, you can save not 10, not 20, not even 40, but 50. That's right, you heard it, 50% off. And Mary Kay, do you know what items in the store you can save 50% on? Which ones, Rich? All of them! Oh my goodness. That's for one day only this Saturday. Well, now it's time to check out some very interesting, yet not so well-known places right here at Shell Point. Some of them you'll want to get out and discover for yourself, while others you'll only get an exclusive view right here in this segment. Here's Dan Filgreen with some interesting places here at Shell Point. Shell Point is a big place. Altogether, the property encompasses approximately 400 acres. And you know, on these 400 acres, there are a lot of out of the way and interesting places that most folks never see. Or there might be some places that you pass by often, but have never really stopped to see what's there. So we thought we'd take an opportunity to show you some out of the way and interesting places at Shell Point that are rarely if ever seen. For example, this big area above the sign wall is large enough to hold a pretty substantial size building. And no doubt one of these days there will be a building here. And this is something you see every time you drive into Shell Point. But until I walked around here, I really had no idea how much space was really here. Just north of the sign wall and south of the drive into the springs is this big open area right here. Uh, this is big enough to land a helicopter in, which has happened several times. You all know where the Shell Point billboard is, just near the entrance, but what you might not realize is immediately to the north is quite a tract of land that is all woods. So who would think that not even a hundred yards off of McGregor, there is this woods that seems like a primeval wilderness. And this is the Barrow Pit Lake that's just north of the springs. Now when Shell Point Boulevard was made, they pulled sand out of here to raise the level of the roadbed. Uh, I've been told that this lake is about 40 or 50 feet deep because a lot of sand came out of here. And until recently, this lake was entirely surrounded by the kind of vegetation you see on the far side. It was recently cleared on the south side and is going to become a part of the development of the springs area. And probably it'll get a different name than Viral Pit Lake, I would think. And I'm standing now at the green for the 19th hole of the Shell Point Golf Course. The 19th hole, you'll ask, well, it's the one for which the fairway is Shell Point Boulevard. It's the display hole that welcomes folks to the Shell Point Golf Club. Adjacent to that display hole happens to be the bathroom stop and water and ice station for the front nine holes.
just west of the 12th hole of the golf course is this sizable woods area. And it was left this way in the middle of the golf course because uh, back when the development was happening, there was uh, an eagle's nest here, a pair of eagles nesting. So uh, the woods is still here. The eagles didn't come back. They've been long gone, but there's still quite a woods here in the middle of the golf course. There's several interesting architectural features here at the entrance area to the estuary. There's this small outdoor chapel here, and it's a really lovely spot for some quiet contemplation. This pretty little bridge across the lake at the estuary is a prime feature for taking a stroll in this area. There haven't yet been a whole lot of activities here at the Commons Building at the Cove at the estuary, but in the future, there's probably gonna be some things going on here you'd like to attend. Out here near the chiller plant, which provides you air conditioning, Shell Point actually has a nursery. And the uh, Steve Morton and the grounds crew uh, team propagates plants here for use all over the property. And they, by doing so, they save a tremendous amount of money. But uh, it's just like going to a regular nursery here. There's all kinds of plants that they're growing and they make their way all over the property. And here on the north side of the arbor, just adjacent to the parking lot, is this gate. It's a passageway into the St. Charles Yacht Club residential area. It's controlled by an electronic latch and frankly, I don't know how you work it, but if you need to get through there, there's a way. On the northeast side of the arbor, there is this ancient Indian mound. Maybe it was used for burials. I don't know that anybody really knows, but when the uh, property was developed, a lot of fill was brought in, but no fill was put uh, here where the mound is. You can see that the fill actually drops off and there's a depression, but then from there it goes up and there is this mound. It's a little bit hard to see because of all the foliage, but if you're adventurous and want to tr trek back in here, you can actually see that it's a mound. Just behind the arbor on the east side, right next to this beautiful mature Royal Poinciana tree, is the arbor's gazebo. It's a beautiful little place. Uh, Arbor residents have events here from time to time, but the rest of the time it's just sitting here waiting for you to come and sit and enjoy it. There's a pretty little pond here by this roadside rest stop along Shell Point Boulevard. If you're taking a walk or riding your bike, this is the place to stop and just rest and enjoy the scenery a little bit. Now here's a spot I know you know about. These benches that are under the two huge Cuban laurel trees along the lagoon. But if you haven't taken time to sit here and just soak in this view, boy, it's one of the delights of Shell Point. Now here's a spot not to be missed. It's the island pond out here in the middle of the garden apartment, sometimes called the garden apartment pond. And uh, there's these two cute bridges here and this island in the middle. Now your neighbor, Gaz Goslin, spent a lot of time redoing this uh, island here, turning it into a beautiful spot. And wow, it's just lovely. Look at the view over here into the pond. Sometimes you just gotta take a little time to sit here on this little island and enjoy it. One of my favorite things about the landscaping here at Shell Point are these beautiful Royal Poinciana trees that we have all over the property. You can't miss them when they're in bloom like this. They're just gorgeous. Some places in the world they call them a flamboyant tree for a good reason. I planted one of these in my backyard and I just hope that someday it looks like this. Part of the wonderful charm of the garden apartments is that each building here on the island has a courtyard. And each courtyard has a lovely feature to sit and enjoy, such as a fountain, or in this case, in Teladora, there's a koi pond. And boy, these fish have really gotten big since the last time I was here. 
A wonderful way to spend an afternoon is to just go from building to building and check out each one of these lovely features. I'd love to just sit by each one of them and do a little thinking. Keep watching Shell Point TV. We'll have more of these out of the way and interesting spots to show you in the near future. It looks like the good old professor is back again this week to talk about English history and culture. In his session series, this is the final one. Let's hear from Professor Kerr and Terry Kolath about the session five that deals with the Napoleonic Wars, War of 1812, World War I and II, and much more. Hi, I'm Terry Kolath, manager of the Academy of Lifelong Learning here at Shell Point. If you've been on this journey through English history and culture with us, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to do session five, which takes us from the Pacific, Australia, New Zealand, through the Napoleonic Wars, right up to the legacy after World War II. This has to be a fascinating time. It is. It's going to discuss um, how after the loss of those naughty colonials who decided they wanted independence and democracy, mm -hmm. why would they want that? Um, <laughs> Britain had to look elsewhere. And in fact, in parallel with the colonies in North America growing, uh, the big um, opportunity was India. And so Britain turned wholeheartedly into filling the vacuum that the Mughal Empire, which had run India for 300 years, had created. And year by year, the British East India Company, private company, Company, not a mm -hmm. government institution, um, with an army, can you believe it, an army of 20,000 soldiers, this is a private company, um, they nibbled away and took the, the south, they took the, uh, the Madras or Chennai area, then they moved up into Calcutta, and then they moved into the Ganges Plain, and eventually the, the, the peculiarity that the uh, Mughal emperor asked the British to support him to fight off people like Afghanistan and people who are threatening him. And so Britain yeah. became established in India and it became a very, very successful um, colony um, and uh, very financially rewarding. 25% of the GDP of Britain came out of uh, India. And from then it moved further east. So you see them moving towards um, Malaya um, for tin and rubber. Um, and the colonies were set up there. And then further east to Singapore, which was established uh, by Sir Stamford Raffles. And of course, in the mid-19th century, the issues with uh, China came about mm -hmm. and the Opium Wars. And as a consequence of that, uh, Hong Kong was given to Britain. Um, so you can see Britain extending its influence throughout Asia. Um, we shouldn't forget, of course, that the famous uh, explorers like uh, Cook um, set off and he navigated around um, the Pacific mm -hmm. and he was the one who rediscovered New Zealand and rediscovered Australia and a consequence of that was that uh, when the colonists said we don't want any of your criminals anymore in Britain we had to send a criminal somewhere and they were sent to Botany Bay which is just beside Sydney and that became the founding of the first colony in, in Australia. Then, um, jumping back to the early part of the 19th century, um, Britain had to focus very much on this threat uh, to its sovereignty, which is Napoleon. And we'll talk about the Napoleonic dream to conquer all of Europe and what Britain did to try and uh, stop that. And of course, it ends up with the famous Battle of Waterloo and the end of Napoleon. And then we talk about um, the expansion in Africa with okay. Cecil Rhodes and Rhodesia and Kenya, Sudan, and Egypt. Um, so there was a time when there's a whole strip of the whole of Africa from north to south had uh, pink on the map. Um, and then around about the turn of the century, the 20th century, things changed and America began to be the dominant power in the world. Um, London was the largest city in the world until about 1900. Mm. Um, so you can see that the, um, this, the balance was changing. Britain was no longer the de facto policeman of the world and America began to pick that role up from 1900 onwards. Um, it took about 15 to 20 years to get established, but the, the writing was on the wall. And the First World War was devastating to Britain, of course. Uh, America participated, but it tore Europe apart, and all the great empires, Austria, yeah. uh, Germany, etc., um, were, de were demolished. And so people called it the end of empires. Britain hung on to its empire um, until the Second World War, when once again it was very much under threat from Nazi Germany and the United States, 
was very, very heavily involved, of course. Um, and uh, at the end of that period, Britain was totally worn out. Mm -hmm. It had fought for six years and was bankrupt, and America had kept it afloat by lend-lease, and really Britain was uh, completely dependent on American finances. And it was from that time onwards, from the 40s and 50s, that America became the dominant international player, and Britain started to take a lower and lower position culminating in the fiasco of the Suez Crisis, where Britain tried to control the Suez Canal. America didn't like that idea, mm -hmm. and so that was the end of the British Empire, and all the uh, colonial areas were one by one handed back. Even Hong Kong was the last one to be handed back to Chinese. When I was in China during that time, I said to my friends in mainland China, how do you feel about uh, England hanging, han hanging, handing back Ch uh, Hong Kong? They said, oh, Hong Kong's just coming home. <laughs> And then we just finish off by taking a helicopter view of the British influence on the world today um, and uh, its relationship with the United States. Fascinating. Well, this is a great opportunity to look at a, at a perspective of history of English culture. A little later in the semester, we'll be looking at current, um, the current situation in England and Europe, and we will be... be beginning a look at U.S. history. Hope you'll join us. And now it's time to take a look at today's happenings, academy news, menus, and village church connections. Hello, and welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Caitlin Van Scoy. And I'm Bev Chambly. And we're here to give you all the information for Thursday. We start at 7.15 with Bend, Breathe, and Balance. That's in the Tarpon Room. And following that at 8 o'clock is Men's Golf Association. They'll be meeting at the Shell Point Golf Club. Also at 8, Round Robin Doubles Tennis will be played at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. The Paddlers Club will be meeting at the Kayak Storage for their weekly outing at 8.30. 9.15 is the time for Shuffleboard. If you're interested, come down to the Shuffleboard Courts behind the Resident Activity Center. At 9.30, current events will be discussed in the game room of the Woodlands. And ladies' match play will be going on at the Woodlands Tennis Courts at 9.30. Come out for the resident hurricane seminar at 10.30 in the Village Church. That's very important information for you to know. At 10.45, the Suzy Q heads to Fathoms and through the locks if you'd like to go on that trip. That's it for the morning. Here's Bev for the afternoon. Thank you, Caitlin. We're going to start with Mahjong this afternoon. That's held in the Library Lounge at 12.45. And the Aviation Club will be in the Osprey Room at 115. Also at 115, Samba is played at the Resident Activity Center. We have Fun and Fitness at the Community Room of King's Crown, also at 145. At 2 o'clock, the Stamp Ministry will be going on down in the tunnel in the Stamp Room. And we have a 245 Health Connections class, Osteo Break Free, Session B in the Tarpon Room. That's currently full. Now, our seamstress will be here in the Osprey Room at 4 o'clock. And at 4.30, the Alcoholics Anonymous meeting will be in the Woodlands Sable Room. Our last activity of the day is 6.30 with Pinochle. That's played in the library lounge of the island. Well, thank you for joining us today, and we will be back here again tomorrow. Hi, I'm Terry Kolath, and I'd like to take a moment to thank everybody who wears a blue jacket to volunteer in our pavilion auxiliary and to say with summertime travels, we have some openings. If you have some time to spare, please give me a call and I can tell you about a number of opportunities to spend that time in a very meaningful way this summer. I'd also like to tell you what's coming up new in the Academy tomorrow. We have that Apple iPad, iPhone, Mac free walk-in clinic. Just bring your question to the Technology Teaching Center on the island. Menu specials for Thursday, May the 26th. In the crystal room, the platter is fried chicken, green beans, and macaroni and cheese. The dinner special is the crystal carving board for $15.95. The soup, potato leek. In the Island Cafe, the special is a hot Italian with provolone, ham, salami, and pepperoni sandwich. Also with potato salad for $7.75. In the Palm Grill, black and blue ribeye is for $20.95 or Florida Snapper for $17.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm David Pavey. 
The following true story was recounted by a physician in Denver. I don't even know his name, but the story tugged at my heart, so I thought it might do as much for you. Here's what he wrote. I just had one of the most amazing experiences of my life, and I wanted to share it with my friends. I was driving home from a meeting this evening about 5 p.m., stuck in traffic on Colorado Boulevard, and the car started to choke and sputter and die. I barely managed to coast into a gas station, glad only that I would not be blocking traffic and would have a somewhat warm spot to wait for the tow truck. The engine wouldn't even turn over. Before I could make the call, I saw a woman walking out of the quick mart, and it looked like she slipped on some ice and fell into a gas pump, so I got out to see if she was okay. When I got there, it looked more like she had been overcome by sobs than that she had fallen. She was a young woman who looked really haggard, with dark circles under her eyes. She dropped something as I helped her up, and I picked it up to give it to her. It was just a nickel. At that moment, everything came into focus for me. The crying woman, the ancient suburban, crammed full of stuff with three kids in the back, one of them in a car seat, and the gas pump reading $4.95. I asked her if she was okay and if she needed help. And she just kept saying, I don't want my kids to see me crying. So we stole on the other side of the pump from her car. She said she was driving to California and that things were very hard for her right now. So I asked, and you were praying? That made her back away from me a little. But I assured her I was not a crazy person. I said, he heard you? And he sent me. I took my card out and swiped it through the card reader on the pump so she could fill up her car completely. And while it was fueling, I walked next door to McDonald's and bought a few bags of food, some gift certificates for more, and a big cup of coffee. She gave the food to the kids in the car who attacked it like wolves, and we stood by the pump eating fries and talking a little. She told me her name and that she lived in Kansas City. Her boyfriend had left her two months ago and she'd not been able to make ends meet. She knew she wouldn't have money to pay rent on January the 1st and in desperation had finally called her parents with whom she hadn't spoken for about five years. They lived in California and said she could come and live with them and try to get on her feet there. So she packed up everything she owned in the car. She told the kids they were going to California for Christmas, but not that they were going to live there. I gave her my gloves, a little hug, and I said a quick prayer for her, for safety on the road. As I was walking to my car, she said, So you're like an angel or something? This definitely made me cry. I said, sweetie, at this time of the year, angels are really busy. So sometimes God uses regular people. It was so incredible to be a part of someone else's miracle. And of course, you guessed it. When I got in my car, it started right away and got me home with no problem. I'll put it in the shop tomorrow to check it, but I suspect the mechanic won't find anything wrong. Sometimes angels fly close enough to you that you can hear the flutter of their wings. Well, that's the end of the doctor's story. But maybe, just maybe today, you'll come across someone in need of an angel. And Jesus will say, whatever you did for one of the least of these my brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Thank you for tuning in to Village Church Connections. 
Thanks for joining us for another episode of Shell Point Today for Thursday, May the 26th. I'm Rich Nation. And I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. Join us tomorrow as our thoughts turn to Memorial Day weekend and we bring you a riveting story about resident Tom Wilcox. He served in the Army during World War II aboard a B-26 bomber that went down over Holland. Sounds interesting, Mary Kay. Can't wait to hear about that. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you back here tomorrow. If you decide to go exploring around the Shell Point property, be very careful because you might get stuck. Oops.